Shalom. Shalom. Uh, Shalom. Giving all praises to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai Bahasham Kakodash. And uh, this is uh, pretty much a response to uh, a video that was put up by Holy Bible Defenders uh, titled Dr. Brown. And this guy, he's, um, you can clearly see he's a small hat. And um, he works with uh, the Amish fellow. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, John Mark Reiser, AKA Vocab Malone. The name of the video, as you can see on the screen, is Dr. Brown and his madness, Genesis 1 and 1. Triune doctrine, meaning three, three and one. Triune doctrine, waxing worse. And I'm going to let you, so this is just a response to that. I was going to give it another title, but, uh, and I may go into other topics. Let's see where the spirit takes me. Yeah, currently, uh, Apostle Ryan Lab is going to Daniel chapter 7 which I kind of touched on it, Daniel chapter seven and channel, Jan, Daniel chapter two, excuse me. And it's good to go through these whole chapters um, because people forget. They may know certain precepts within certain prophetic chapters, but then if you say, well, could you go up a couple of verses, then they get lost. You got to know the whole, you got to know the whole chapter. You have to go through the whole chapter. It's the most high will in the future. I'll, I'm going to go back into the whole chapters. And we did this in the past. The videos are up there. Um, so let me just let this play. And then I'll come back and I'll break it down the right, the right way. Translations. You'll see right out of the gate, they translate differently. So the Hebrew verse sheep rather he met to mind that arts for hard to tell the whole who the verse go on. Most of our Christian Bibles say in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was without form and void. Most Jewish translations say when God mm. began to create the heavens and the earth, and the earth being formless and void, a darkness found place. So then God says there could be light, right? So they're they're different right out of the gate. And then Brady raises, which most people think of immediately reading the Bible. Well, Genesis 1 seems different than Genesis 2 in terms of order. You know, so those questions come up. And then where does Genesis fit with science and are these literal days or not? You can say we have endless debates. No, no, no. We have no debate about why Genesis 1 is there. It's to teach us that God created the universe. That's why it's there. And that's what we all agree on. Well, the Bible didn't communicate well. Well, what was it trying to communicate? That one God, not many gods. And you can see this individual vocab alone, he saved his his stash off. He's a he's an Amish right about now. One God created the entire universe. One God manifested his character, who he is. Genesis 1 is primarily there to teach us about God, yeah. not to teach us scientific data, which I'm going to demonstrate in a moment, all right? And you can be first older, that's not the issue here. It's primarily there to teach us about God. The creator, the one and only God who created the entire universe. Entire universe. One God. That's what we all agree on. Well, the Bible didn't communicate well. Well, it teach us that God created the universe. And that's why it's there. We have no debate about why Genesis 1 is there. It's to teach us that God created the universe. And that's why it's there. And that's what we all agree on. Well, the Bible didn't communicate well. Well, what was it trying to communicate? That one God, not many gods, one God created the entire universe. One God manifested his character, who he is. Genesis 1 is primarily there to teach us about God, yeah. not to teach us scientific data, which I'm going to demonstrate in a moment, right? And you can be younger or older. That's not the issue here. It's primarily there to teach us about God. The creator, the one and only God who created the entire universe. 
the one who uh, we learn about his character too. He brings light out of darkness. He brings order out of chaos. He he creates human beings in his own image. He he makes everything to produce after its own kind. Entire universe. The one who uh, we learn about his character too. He brings light out of darkness. He brings order out of chaos. He he creates human beings in his own image. He he makes everything to produce after its own kind. You learn about God. Through Genesis one, and when you read the rest of the Bible, the reflections on creation—you know, they'll mention six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, rested on seven. But what you glean from it is who God is, how He orders the universe, how He puts down Israel's enemies, how He establishes the day and the night. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rucha Hakodash, and double honors to the elder apostles, the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors as well to the brethren, you fellow believers of the truth, and shalom to the elect. But anyway, I want to go in this video here with uh, one book here, Malone's channel, with this guy, Dr. Brown. He has a channel called Ask Him Anything. You know, I answer. But I've seen several situations where people ask him things, and he said he quite just doesn't have the answer. So I don't know what's up. One of them is a mark of the beast. He did a, if you go to his channel, um, he and you and you put in, uh, I guess MOTB or whatever. He asked, or someone asked a question concerning uh, the MOTB. What does it mean? And he basically said, I, I really don't know. So he doesn't know anything. And he rolled up. He did a he did a uh, vocab maneuver. He rolled up on one of the camps. I don't know if it was a GMS camp, and he was trying to convince them that they're not the people. And he failed miserably. Ain't nobody listening to you. Edomites know goddamn more, all right? Anyway, um, so you heard the brother's voice, which is the elder of the Baltimore camp, Karatazar Bar. Um, he always does good videos. He, he does, like, short videos and goes straight to the point, which 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 is good. You know, we, we taught everything. You know, we're going through everything. We do these long videos. But to me, in a way, the short videos are the best. And you want to have short videos and go into one topic because, you know, Jake, their attention span is very low. So you got to kind of get, get in and get out quick. So you heard what he said. You heard what he said. And watch the rest of the video, but I'm going to go into it. He said he kept saying, God, God, the one God, the one true God. So I have some questions for him. Let's go to Genesis. Barashit in the Hebrew. Barash in the Hebrew, which actually means the, the small had say barashit, which means bar meaning in, raash meaning head. Or headings, you know, head in the in the head or in the beginning. Let me go to Genesis. Genesis. Uh, and you know what? These guys, well, that's the Ariar Hebrew. He really doesn't, he made it up. I remember Ariar and myself after I learned. So small hatch used to come up and argue with high priest Ariar. And they were going to the Hebrew. And then Ariar would curse him out. And their former Hebrew, there was a brother by the name of uh, Shalomah. He be, he got deeper than Ariani Hebrew, and he was able to speak to a small hat in their in their form of Hebrew. You know, if you around those small hats, there's certain words they'll say you can pick up. And there's some of those Hebrew words that they speak. Their Hebrew sounds the same as, as you know, uh, like uh, you'll you'll see. If you go around these uh, communities, they'll have like temples, but it's written in Hebrew. And I can read, I can read, the, I can read the sign, you know, I can read what it says. Like they might have uh, uh, Beth, Beth, uh, I don't know. Um, well, it might, you might see Bethlehem and Bethlehem 
and the Hebrew is bayath lacham, lacham meaning bread, and bayath meaning house. So, so for you to say, oh, well, I really, I don't know the Hebrew, and he can't speak. He used to curse out so-called small hats in in the in their form of Hebrew, especially Shalomah. He could hold a convert. He 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 knew he was fluent in the so-called ancient Hebrew and their form of Hebrew. So you have to and see the thing about this. I was going to put Hebrew in the title, but ain't nobody going to watch the video if I put Hebrew in there because. You know what I found out with Jake? Jake likes to be entertained. I did an excellent video on the papal bulls and hardly anybody really got into it because you gotta, you gotta think. You know, Jake doesn't like to think. I remember years ago I was teaching Gazak's class because he was working. So I kind of took the class over and I had a full class and I remember saying, we're going to have a test next week. And then that following week, maybe 20% of the people showed up because Jake don't like, oh, it's a test. I ain't going, I ain't going to, because you want to be entertained. You want to be entertained. You want to see an Edomite woman or an Edomite man lick the bottom of your shoe, of a brother's shoe. Uh, let me see. Where was I going to go? Anyway, let's do this. It'll come back to me. If you if you go to Genesis, oh yeah, this is what I said I was gonna do. Let me come back. Let me come back. I just want to check this. See, I do so many videos. I hope they didn't take that one down unless I put it on another video. Okay, I did it on my other video, on my other uh, channel. But let me do this here. Bear me for a minute, I'll get back into it in a minute. Great <laughs> Millstone versus Safari. What is this, a pay-per-view event? This ain't no MFN pay-per-view event. I'm trying to find my other channel here. Hey, they don't send since I've been. They don't send out notifications on on my page. Most of the time, they don't. Come on, man. Come on, dog. Show you right there. They don't send out notifications on my other channel. Let me do it this way. Bear with me for a minute. Where the hell is it? Okay, I gotta do it this way.
held as a transit three. Elders in transit three. Let me see something. Well, Esau have been messing with us. Oh, yeah, I did this one. Eh, 405. I mean, they, people got to get used to this channel. A lot of the notifications don't really go out on this channel. Uh, Christianity was forced on the 12 tribes of Israel, a list of papal bulls. And that, that's important. And the papal bulls that I focus on were the pap some of the papal bulls, like four of the papal bulls that are uh, uh, Rodrigo Bogier or Alexander VI out of Spain, the power came out of Spain, didn't come out of Rome. The power was one time out of, out of Rome when Esau, when, when, um, when they were chained down for a thousand years, when they came back into power, they came, they came back out of the, Tur the Turco-Edomites. They took down the so-called Byzantine Empire. But then it was also the Edomites of Spain. That's where the power came out because Everything was focused on Spain at that time. You know, that whole um, renaissance, you know, cause it, because they declared war on us, took down the Moors. They say the Moors ruled 800 years, which the Moors, who said that? Um, Tariq Nasheed even said that. And even uh, Professor James Small said that's just a generic, a generic term meaning blacks or dark-skinned people. Because Moors, you say, oh, there goes a Moor. That means he's in, in, the, in the religion of Islam. No, you had, you had Hebrews that were called Moors. They were just black people. They were not Arabs. They showed you that in the movie, the Robin Hood movie. Um, what was the name of the damn movie? Uh, something of Thieves. It was uh, Rob, um, it was uh, Prince of Thieves, I believe it's called. And um, I remember that movie very well because myself, High Priest Arya, and another brother named Rahab, we went, we said, let's go see the movie. It was in the middle of the week. And we just went, because we did that. We, if it was a period piece dealing with the scriptures and history, we would go and see it. So I remember it like it was yesterday. It was myself. I priest Arya and uh, Rahab, brother of Rahab, priest Rahab, he's, he's in the world somewhere getting ready to eat a missile. But uh, we saw the movie and then, you know, with Morgan Freeman and they showed the scene where uh, the opening scene, which was a good movie, good, good movie. And that was Jake. To show you that that was Jake, the Robin Hood character, Robin of Loxley, he was a Jake. The old man was an old ass Jake. But he had, but his companion was the Moor. The, I forget the name of the Moor, but played by uh, uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, Freeman. Very uh, excellent. By the way, he's a Ni Nigerian, right? Morgan Freeman is Nigerian for, the, for you uh, people out there in ISUPK land. So the opening scene was actual Arabs, and it actually got Arab looking people getting ready to chop the hands off of Robin and um, the, the Moor. Because you had, you had Jakes that embraced the religion of Islam, but they were not Arab people. You also had Jakes that knew that they were Israelites that kept the laws, statutes, and commandments that were also called Moors. Moors were so-called, like saying th that Negro over there, that black over there. Puerto Ricans, my wife calls me Moreno, this is Moreno. You know, a lot of times it's, it's Spanish people talk Spanish to me thinking I'm Puerto Rican or Dominican or whatever. And my wife was saying Spanish, no, he's a Moreno, he's a Moor, all right? 
Now, when you go into the history of the Moors, I'll get back into it. When you go into the history of the Moors, there was a place called, um, what was it called? The Hibernian, if I'm saying it right, having gone through this history in a while, a Hibernian Peninsula. What do you think the word Hibernian means? Now, if you go to Google, it used to be in Google, it says the word Hiber Hiber is a Hibernian, I believe it is, Hibernian Peninsula. Uh, the word goes back, the root word goes back to the Hebrew. So, they, so the Moors were Hebrews. <laughs> they were the Israelites. That's why they were taken down the same time when the so-called Byzantine Empire was taken down. That's your history. You got to know your history. In order for you to break down certain prophetic scriptures, the the apostle Ramlab is going through Daniel seven. I'm I guarantee you he he's going into history. I guarantee you he's going into history. You go into Daniel the chap chapter seven. You come across the the, uh, the Babylonians. There was such a nation kingdom called the Babylonian kingdom and and what power came in after the Babylonians were taken down the medial Persian empire that's in the scriptures it might not and it's also mentioned in the scriptures too it met the king of Greca and and, and Daniel 8 that, look we know we know them prophecies man we steeped in them prophecies that's why we know for sure a hundred percent that the MOTB is what it is mentioned of in Revelation chapter 13. And other camps just scratching their head over it. Other major camps, they don't have no sense trying to, you know, bucking up against what we're saying, man. Forgive me for my rant. But, um, so if you go, so it's important to watch videos like this. A list of the papal bulls. When you go to the list of the papal bulls, the list, a list of the papal bulls, which scripture kept coming to my mind, I didn't go into it, was Revelation chapter 20. That's the papal bulls. I'm going to get back into it. Let me, let me rant a little bit. <clears throat> they did, did things to decree. Anything Esau does, he does it by his law. When Hitler came into power, he came into power under the uh, this, the uh, voting, the election system. He was elected to office. He didn't just roll up in there. Anyway, let me see. Let me go to Revelation real quick. Revelation 20. Satan bound. Now we know who Satan is. That's the power structure of Esau, of the Edomites. And Satan just means adversary. So it should read the enemy bound, the enemy of who? Of Israel. And I saw an angel come down from heaven. This represents our Lord having the key of the bottomless pit. Does not the Lord have the keys to death and a great chain in his hand? Now, it wasn't a physical chain. It was a spiritual chain. Just like we were we're down under this man. We're, we're in a, uh, a spiritual chain, right? The angels which, which left their first estate chained in darkness. I'm paraphrasing. That's in Peter and that's also in Jude. So the chains that we're in is these damn foul, these bodies, these weak ass bodies. And he laid hold on the dragon, another name for Satan. The dragon is talking about what? Esau. The dragon is mentioned in, in Revelation, the 12th chapter. That's the power structure, the military might, and the political might, and the religious might of this man, of this system. That that old serpent, dragon, serpent, is the same, same thing, Leviathan, which is the what? The word devil is what? The word devil actually means false accuser. Diabolos means false accuser that accuse us in front of the Most High's face uh, night and day. I believe that's Revelation 12. I'm not going to go to it. 
and Satan, the enemy. So let's read this again. And he laid hold on the European power structure of that, of that time. That old European power structure, structure, which is our enemy or which is our, a false accuser. And the enemy and bound him a thousand years. And if you want to put an exact date on it, you had a period called, and I spoke about this in previous videos, you had a period called the Dark Ages. The Middle Ages, the Dark Ages are medieval times. Evil means bad time. When you do, when you do the research, just go to Google. On the Dark Ages, the Middle Ages or the medieval times, is from about 500 AD to about 1500 AD. Even though he was in power before that, that thousand years represent from about 500, the dark ages. And when you, re when you do the research on it, they say, oh, we don't have them. Nothing really was happening back there. Yeah, because you wasn't making things happen. We, you were on the bottom getting your asses kicked and you getting ready to get your asses kicked again and cast him into the bottomless pit, that's Europe, and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive, how did he deceive people? Through his Christianity. The first act was, if you don't, that's what the papal bulls are all about. The, the um, one of the papal bulls that Alexand um, uh, Alexander the Sixth uh, made a decree that we, okay, now that we took them over, we're gonna, we're gonna send missionaries now to make sure they get it right. If you didn't accept it, you got put to death. So the true, the root, the true roots of Christianity is, if you don't accept this, we're gonna kill you. The Lord never said that to anybody. He never told the disciples if they don't accept it, kill them. They said the nations, deceive the nation no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little, a little season. That little season is 500 years. He's still, he's been ruling since 500 years. And ultimately, the, 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 the great deception is going to be the karagma. That's why it mentions the karagma right here. So when you read this here, when he, when he came out for that little season, he came out through what? A series of papal bulls. So now, let me come back over here. Now it says, oh, give me a second.
Okay, so we're in, um, forgive me, but we're in uh, Genesis uh, 1 verse 1, right? It says, in the beginning, it says the word God created the heavens and the earth. Let's see how well my Hebrew is. See, it'll tell you right here, say, bereth, bereth. Bereth, if you can see it on this, in a box translation, Bereshit, 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 in the beginning. And it ain't, and it ain't the way we speak, Baraash, 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 Raash means head, Ba is in. Yath basically means in the in the headings, yath is almost like putting the ing suffix to the word. So, bara ash yath, bara a, but bara to create, and that's true. Bara a means to create or made. The word is Alahaya. From the root Alahaya, noun, common, and masculine. Ooh, they answered it. Yeah, get down, blue letter. It says translation Elohim from the root Alahaya, Hebrew noun, common, masculine, plural. Absolute English God. Did you, did you see? Are you looking at that? Let me read that again. Translation Elohim. We say Allahayim. And Il, 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 Allah is God. When the Lord was on his, on the throne, he said, My power, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He said, he's, He didn't say Eli, Eli. He said, Allah, Yah, Allah, Yah. How do we know that? Because the, the people thought he was calling on Elijah. Allah means my God, my God. When the Arabs call on Allah, that's the true name of God. But then that was one of his names. But the, the absolute name of the Most High was given to Moses because they knew of the name, the true name of the Most High. But he was called under other names. Allah was one of his names. So the Most High said, I'm going to give you my number one name, my true name. This is my name. He said, I am that I am. That's what he said. I am that I am, meaning I'm, I'm it. I'm what's up. That's what he said. I'm what's up. Okay, it's all about me. That's what it means. So the name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. Yah, meaning he. How meaning to be. In other words, I'm what's up. So it says here, translation, Elohim, which is Allah Hayyam, Allah and the Yum makes it plural. Anytime you see the suffix Yum on a word, it means plural. If I say, if I say, um, Ayash, I'm saying man. If I say Ayash Yum, I'm saying men. From the root Alahayim, H430, Hebrew noun, common, masculine, the angels are masculine, plural, absolute English God. But they should have said God, that they said plural. So let's read again. Bara ash yath bara ah in the headings made Allahayim. The word is plural, gods, not God. So, Dr. Brown, you're wrong. Ash means definitely, that, that, that just means definitely. Uh, ha, ha, shamayam, ha is the shamayam, mayam means water. Shah means pertaining to the water. 
It means heavens. See? Hasamayam. Has, has Hasamayam. Ha meaning the. And uh, sha, sha meaning like pertaining to and Mayam means water. Which is called the heavens. Wa'ath and definitely ha aratiza the earth ha it says ha ha ret which the, this is the way they say it they'll they'll, they'll say haratiza they'll say ha ret which means the earth it can mean the ground the earth terrestrial. So what word do we pull out of here? Allah means God. Give me a second. That's one of the that's one of the bishops calling me about the camp. Give me a second. Okay, so we're back. So now you're learning Hebrew, you know? And like I said, we used to do Hebrew videos, nobody would watch them, because nobody, Jake doesn't like to think. So Dr. Brown is completely, and he's a, he's, he's a small hat. He's, he's one of them, he's a so-called. He's a so-called, man. And I guarantee he doesn't know the prophecies. He's a so he's a so-called uh, slash uh, Christian. So let me see where I'm going to go with this. I think I answered it. I think I answered it. And then when we say that we we are gods, the two individuals in the IUIC, there was a Detroit marching. They say we are the gods. One of them is uh, uh, Asaph, which he attended one of our Passovers before he was looking for the so the, you know the true school of Israel. So he goes way back, and I ran into him years ago, and he said that. But he he looked totally different. He was a kid. He he was a kid, <clears throat> but it was him and the other brother, the Levite, Levitical brother. I forget his name, but they say, we are the gods, we are the gods. And they didn't say anything wrong in, in, in uh, Vocab Malone, the Amish, the Amish gentleman, Vocab Malone. See, they're calling themselves gods. Well, wait a minute. We are, the, these are angels, by the way. These are the angels led by the chief angel, which is Yahweh Shai. Everybody in the spiritual realm is considered angelic. Okay, where am I going to go from here? So I got that out of the way. Oh, I'll give you another proof. This is from Dr. Brown's elixir. Dr. Brown, if it's only talking about God, who is God talking to? And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, 
And God said, let us make man in our image after our life. Why did they say our? Why did they say our? Let us, key word us, and our. Well, who's God talking to if there's only God? It wasn't God. It was it was the angels of God, so to speak. And if you notice, anytime you see God, you see God, you see God. When you go to the second chapter, and this is also in the, the, the red Bible that we have. Uh, it says uh, the create the creation of man and woman. Uh, thus, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, uh, ended his work which he made. It really should be they made, and he and they rested on the seventh day from all the work which they had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because it because that in it he had rested from all his work. So who was doing the work? The angels led by Yahweh Shai. That's in uh, St. John 1. So the Jehovah Witnesses are right when it says he is a God, which the powers of God's created and made. These are the generations of the heavens. Now the word generations, certain like the Ansarah community, Muslims would say these are the generations of the heavens, meaning the angels had generations. No, the word generation means record. This is the, the record. That's what it means. These are the records of the heavens and the earth. This is the, this is the you know, this is what happens. So it's being put, written in stone. And the earth, when they were what created, what was created, the heavens and the earth and the universe. In the day that the Lord God, now the word Lord God, Lord, uh, all capitals, um, the word there is Yahweh, made the earth and the heavens. And the Lord didn't do anything. He, he merely, uh, uh, Gave the initiated the order, and the angels did it, led by the head angel, which is our Lord Yahweh Shai. Let's go to Saint John one, and I'm gonna end it. In the beginning, what beginning was the word? That's Yahweh Shai. I come in the volume of the book that is spoken to me. And the word Yahweh Shai was with God or the gods, and the word was a God. It should be a God. The same was in the beginning with the gods, which are the angels. And all things were made by him who? The word Yahweh Shai. The, the gods work with him, the angels work with him. And without him, or well, him or them was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let's stay with him and he. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. John never fell out the truth. But I guess you PK out there, John never fell out the truth. If he fell out the truth, the Lord wouldn't praise him in um, Matthew 11 and Matthew 17. It says the same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, which is our Lord, which is a God, the chief God that created the universe, along with the angels, that all men through him might believe, well, all men among who? Among Israelites. He came unto his own, meaning 
thou shalt call, Matthew 121, thou shalt call his name. The word there is Jesus, but the actual word is Yahweh, I mean, Yahweh, which means the deliverer. And then the angel said, you're going to call him this name because that name means, that word means he delivered. He will deliver his people from their sins. He was not that light. John was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light, a forerunner. Isaiah, I believe that's 43. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Okay, it says he came unto his own, his own received him not. Meaning he came to his, the people that was in his town. I believe that's Luke 4. I'm not going to go to it. He opened up the Torah. He read uh, uh, Isaiah 6. He opened it up to Isaiah 61 about the gospel, the good news, glad tidings, and he and closed, closed the scroll. And he said, today this prophecy has been fulfilled. So what he was saying was, I'm the Messiah. So they tried to throw him off, off of a, a mountain. His own was his town people. Because remember, he didn't come to all Israelites. Israelites were scattered throughout the great diaspora, throughout the whole planet Earth. Look, when he was came on the scene, you had the Northern Kingdom already in the Americas, not no goddamn Africa. They didn't go to Africa. They didn't go to Fopi's teaching. They went to Africa. The Lord's not dealing with Fopi at all point blank period. You're trying to find a place to fit in. That's why you went to Chicago. You know, you went to the funeral talking about this guy that passed. I don't, I don't know the individual. How great he was, I, I don't know. I don't think you know him. You're just trying to find a place to fit in. You're lost. Anyway, um, with that, I'm going to say uh, Shalom.